Okay, so we've been talking about, um, obviously, uh, discipleship for quite some time. I'm just going to read again Matthew 18 to, the, to um, Matthew 28, 18 to the end of the chapter. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Um, we have been talking about discipleship and is about, and we've been talking about how it's about two core things. Uh, and uh, we've looked at this uh, PowerPoint here uh, that discipleship is about relationship and teaching. And I wanted to have for you something that is kind of just a clear picture. I mean, it's obviously a, a pretty simple picture, but do you know that you remember things if there's some sort of like picture to them? Our minds work better to remember things if there's some sort of logo or image. And so you have, that's why I have that. And uh, so our, our the, the overall discipleship is really connected to discipleship and teaching. And then we've also looked at that the basic uh, discipleship model or a, a disciple is a learner always pursuing learning in Christ. A disciple is an applier. He aims to put into practice Jesus' truths in all areas of life. And then a, a, a disciple of Jesus is one who begins to reproduce disciples others in the name of Jesus Christ for his glory. And that's a bit of a scary one, right? I think uh, as we look at the Canadian church, that last one is the one where we don't necessarily engage in that all that well. I think we like to kind of, we like to uh, uh, kind of sit uh, in, in the first two to some degree, uh, maybe not going all in in the applying. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk about the therefore go, therefore go. Make disciples, okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, that's what we're kind of talking about today and looking at that. What does it mean to go make disciples? And I think it, it scares us. We talked about uh, being a little bit fearful of that last week. But I want to say, guys, that uh, basically the, the kind of the overall point of what I want to say today, and we'll talk about lots, is that if you are open to learning, if you're doing the first one, if you are open to learning and your heart is open to learning, Right? And learning can be scary because true learning happens only when change happens. So learning can be scary. But when we are open to learning and then uh, we desire to have our foundation built on the rock so, and, and, and our house to be strong and our foundation to be strong. So uh, we, we, we desire to be strong because we don't want to fall and collapse to be crushed by the winds and the trials of life, right? When they beat against us, we want to be able to stand. And so we engage and understand that we need to not just hear and learn, but we need to apply. Guys, when you're doing the hearing and learning, you're changing what you need to change. And you're doing the applying, again, engaging intentionally that application of what we know of the Word of God into our lives. When you're engaged in that, the reproducing almost follows naturally. The reproducing almost follows naturally, right? It follows naturally because that's just the natural process of this system that God has set up for us, which we read in Scripture. And so in that case, then, I, I want to I calm some of our fears because some of us would be like, you're saying that I'm going to have to, you know, like I said, we're all or nothing people, right? You're saying that I'm going to have to become a preacher. Or I'm going to have to become a missionary. I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to sell the farm. I'm going to have to, Lord, I don't want any of that. I just want to go to church and I want to learn about you and I want to walk with you and I want to lean on you and find, you know, peace in, in, in my, my shelter in you. I, I want that. I want to know that when I die, I want to know fully that as I come to the end of my years, the end of my days, I want, to, I want to come to the end of my life without fear. I want those in my family that when, I, when they pass away, I don't have to mourn like those who do not have hope. I don't want to have to engage that. I want to know that people in my life know you and that they're, they're living for you and that when they die, they, they go to be with you. And, and, and I want to have that hope and that peace. That's all I want. Like, I want to have those things, but I don't want to have to, like, you know, get out there and, you know, bring up Jesus at Dairy Queen, right? That's a, that's a tough one. These people might think I'm weird, right? I don't want to have to do some of those things. But, guys, if we're engaged in the first two, I, I want you to know, and like I said last week, God is a humble and he's a gentle teacher. 
and he's made, he makes us and he gifts us in talents, but also in the presence of the Holy Spirit within us. He gifts us for the ministries that he has prepared for us, right? And so you are built in the way that God made you. You are built in the, in the way that God designed you so that you could be most valuable to his kingdom as you learn, as you apply, and as you reproduce, right? So that means almost probably just about, or I know this for a fact, none of you will teach and preach like me because you're not me. None of you will. There might be maybe one, I don't want to say none of you are going to be pastors. I don't, want to, I don't know that. I don't know that, okay? There might be some of you that could stand up here and preach a little more often, and God would bless you, and by the presence of the Holy Spirit, Jesus, like the Holy Spirit would show up when you're preaching, right? And people would understand, people would be moved, right? That could happen. And I would love to see that happen. I'm not the only one that can, has to preach from the pulpit. But many of us would be scared to even try that. But I just want to encourage you guys, you are built by God. God made you. Don't forget that. And he made you in mind the way with the giftings and with the ability and even with the character, with the character blessings and the character flaws, okay? Most people, when they talk to me, they say, you talk too fast and you get too excited, right? Um, if you want to be able to preach, you're going to have to slow that right down. And so I've learned a little bit to slow down, but also, and I do, I have, as you're smiling, you're snickering there, but I have slowed down so much. In fact, when I get really excited and really going, and I, I, I notice I do this because I'm watching myself uh, on video, and I'm like, okay, I need to make sure that I finish my sentence or that I don't just assume, like, yeah, everyone's following me. I can just move on, and I leave out words even. I, I, you've probably noticed I do that. I was talking to Murrah about that, and he's like, yeah, we, I've noticed that. Yes, sometimes you don't actually, you'll, like, leave out the word, because if we're talking about, like, repentance, I'll be like, and then, yeah, and then we are, and then, you know, and, and, like, and I should have said, then we are, you know, like, or then we engage in repentance, or then we, whatever, and I'll just leave that out, because I'm getting all excited. You can't do that if you're going to preach, right? You, you have to, every sentence has to be super clear and whatever. And, I, and uh, my mom bugs me about that every once in a while. And I love you, mom, you know. Uh, but, uh, and I'm always like, you know what, if I have to completely change who I am, uh, I don't know if that's the proper ministry for me then. And guys, I want to encourage you too. There are things that you're going to have to change. But remember that God made you the way you are for his purposes. Now, yes, some things have to change because they don't bring him glory, Okay. But much of how he made you was in his mind, he was like, I need to make this person exactly like this because if they're engaged in learning and they're engaged in applying and then as they just engage and apply in the, in the situations and around the people that I'm putting them their lives in, they're going to they're gonna be amazing and their ministry, is, it, it got, I'm going to be able to use them for their kingdom. So a lot of you love visiting. Guys, that is a gift of God, right? Other people, um, some of us are incredibly stubborn, okay? I'm not going to look at anyone because I'm not like, I'm just saying, okay? I can be incredibly stubborn, okay? At the, at the Bible college, there was always one or two students who were just crazy stubborn. And you know what? I, was, I always said, guys, that is not something that we need to get out of them. Even though you think, well, no, a person needs to learn to not be stubborn. no. Guys, if you're stubborn for God's purposes, that it's the people that are completely stubborn for God's purposes that do the greatest things for God's glory. Look at Jesus. In terms of his mission for God, he was stubborn. He, would, he didn't walk in sin. He wasn't sinful in it, but he was stubborn. Everyone else would be, look at Paul, look at Paul. Paul would go into a town, okay, and it happened. If you look, if you study the, the, his, the missionary journeys, right, he went into town after town after town after town, and it happened almost the same in every town. It's very rarely that he wasn't, number one, uh, thrown in jail, then beaten, and then kind of cast out of the town, right? Now, think about that after the third town that you preached the gospel in and that people surrounded you and beat, beat, beat you with rods. He was stoned 
right? Paul was incredibly stubborn for God's purposes. And I don't know what, what things you look at and think, well, this is something that God can't use. Or because I have this, God can't use it. Guys, God made you, and he knows that if you're learning and applying and that you're listening to him and that you're getting rid of the things that he's like, you know what, this has to change. But then he's like, but you know what, I, I, I made you unique in this way for a purpose, right? The reproducing comes quite naturally. The reproducing comes quite naturally if we are walking in the right place. This week, I want to talk about the idea that if we are engaged in learning and being intentionally, uh, intentional about applying what we're learning, that we do become, as we are led by Christ, to be re- reproduced. The problem is that I think many times we become scared, right? We become scared to actually engage with others. Here, here th- th- this, this would be kind of scary for us, but think about this. And I, actually, I want to do this, okay? But don't put up your hand yet, Okay. Have you ever, though, and we're going we're gonna to raise our hands at the end of this, okay? If this has ever happened to you, okay? So don't, uh, and I think it might be, th- this is a little bit of a scary thing already, right? Um, so have you ever felt at some point, like, yes, I should talk to this person about Jesus, or I should say something about Jesus, or I should say something about the Bible. The Bible kind of applies here. I should say something about the Bible, or I should pray for this person, Have you ever had any one of those times where you either felt like, yes, I should say something about Jesus or I should say something about the Bible or maybe I should just stop and pray for this person, but then because you were kind of scared, you didn't? How many of you have ever kind of been engaged in that, right? Everyone kind of goes, yeah. Yeah, there are times when you're like, yeah, I probably should, but you didn't, right? And did you notice that basically we all put our hands up? I want you to realize that. And I had my hand up too, okay? So even though I'm, uh, people would be like, you're kind of, you, you, your filter's maybe not as strong as it should be, and I like, I like talking to people about Jesus and maybe taking that risk a little bit more, I'm always scared to do it. I'm always scared to do it. Or like when a person shares something with you, when you're in a store and you realize that they're really hurting, to like just stop and pray with them, right? My mom is good at that, right? Does my mom have other flaws? Absolutely but she's good at doing that, right? And guys, I want, I want to be, we are all kind of messed up in some areas. And we all know that we could probably share the gospel with people a little bit more. And we all, hear me now, we all don't at times, right? And I'm there too. I'm there too. Ra- raise your hands if this, raise your hand, if, just wait, wait until I'm done though. Raise your hand if this, Okay. If, if there are people in your life that in a heartbeat you would start talking about Jesus with them, if you knew, say you saw the future already, you had these special glasses and that you were able to get into the future and see the future, but you knew that if I start this conversation with this person, by the end of the conversation, they will ask to accept Jesus into their heart, and, they, and you knew that from there would be just a start of a passionate, on-fire relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, are there anyone... Is, is there anyone that comes to mind that if you knew that you started that conversation 45 minutes later, they would not be like, well, you're crazy, whatever, whatever, but they would say, yes, I want that with all of my heart. I've been longing to find that. And, and what do I need to do to be saved? How do I give my life to Jesus? I want him to have my life. Is there, is there anyone here that, that, that people come to mind for you? Right? I think we all have people that come to mind for us. But yet, I think those same people, we know that we haven't maybe, have maybe just kind of broached into that, like breached into that conversation, but then it was a little, we're, we're a little bit fearful, we're a little bit scared, right? Maybe some of the people that come to mind, you have never actually really jumped into that conversation. Because you already kind of know where they're at, and you already know that there's a resistance there. But guys, we all, again, we all have people that we would love. We would absolutely love it. It's our heart's desire that they would fall in love with Jesus Christ if we did. I think probably there are many who come to mind. And I want you guys to, 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 our hands are down, no, but just take a moment to consider the fact that we all have those people. In fact, just about all of us had our hands up for all of those. And even if you weren't willing to raise your hands, I know we're Mennonites, we don't want to be too crazy, right? Raising our hands and we're, no, just joking. Um, That we have people like we're all kind of in the same place, guys. We're all in the same place. We all have people 
that we would love, absolutely love to see fall in love with Jesus and begin pursuing passionately and learning from Him all about Him. Guys, we're all in the same boat. But just because we're all in the same boat and we often choose not to speak and choose not to act, just because we all kind of shy back from doing the the, the, the doing, doing the applying, do, do, and then like we shy back with some of that applying stuff because it gets close to, it, it might cause problems and we have all sorts of fears about it. And then we also, we, if, if, if we're not doing the learning and the applying, the reproducing never actually really happens. And so we know that we don't, we don't want to jump into this, but we kind of shy back from the second one, from the applying, from the sharing, from the speaking out. And we kind of step back from standing out. We step back a little bit from speaking out. And we do this all the time. And it quickly becomes okay and accepted as normal. And you know why it's accepted as normal? Because we all do it. Because we all do it. You look at me and say, well, he doesn't always just share the gospel with everyone. Right? And so it's okay that, that I don't. And then I look at you and say, well, well, he doesn't or she doesn't share the gospel with everyone, so it's okay that I don't. And slowly, throughout all of it, I'm going to say Canada, many, peop- many Christians in many churches, guys, making disciples, intentionally learning and applying and intentionally endeavoring to go make disciples isn't something that we aim for, isn't something that we're super intentional about, about. yes, we all would long for it to happen. And we all have people that we long to find Jesus. But, be, but, but because it's kind of scary and because we're not sure of our own ability and there's a thousand things that we can be scared of, it becomes normal that we don't. Guys, think about this. Think about this. It has become normal for the church to not make disciples. It has become normal for the church and for Christians to not share the gospel, to not intentionally go and share the gospel. It has become normal. That is the norm in our culture. And yet, if we read the Word of God, it is not the norm. If we read the Word of God, it is not okay. If we read the Word of God, we are intentionally to go make disciples, or at least to aim to, at least to be a part of a group, a, 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 a group of people, a, a followers of Jesus Christ, to, to become a, a, a group, to, to do it together. Maybe I'm not the one that, that speaks up front, but I want to be a part of this, and I want to know that when I stand before God and He says, hey, this is what I said to the church before I ascended into heaven, the last thing that I shared was this. It was, go make disciples of all nations. And when I stand before Jesus, I want to be like, so this is what I, was, I, was, I tried to do. And I'm not... I'm not the upfront speaker. I'm the sound guy in the back. But I knew, and with all my heart, I was like, okay, God. And I was praying about it, and I was engaging it. God, let's be about making disciples. Teach me what I need to teach, learn. Teach me what I need to learn. And then help me teach what I need to teach. Help me share what I need to share. Give me courage. Give me the right thoughts in the right moments. Help me be bold (coughs) to encourage others and to love on others. Help me do that, Lord. Matthew 5, uh, 13 to 15 says... You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Notice three things, okay? Notice three things. Um, except, uh, except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Then listen to this. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Guys, as a community in Jesus Christ, that's what we are here. We're a town. We're a little community of light. And guys, I want to encourage you, and I want to say this is a little bit scary, but you can't be hidden. If we're going to shine for Jesus We can't be hidden. And guys, I want to encourage you guys, we're not hidden. Everyone who drives by here and knows you and knows where you live at home, they know that you come to church here. So what you say and how you do and how you live, they're reading the Word of God. 
You're the Bibles that they're reading. You're the Jesus that they're learning about. I'm not saying that you're Jesus, but that's where they're trying to see in you what you do, how you say, how you live. You can't be hidden. We're not hidden. They're learning from us. I pray they're learning an accurate view of Jesus' love and grace and truth. That he's, an accurate view that he's all about them. He's all about us. He's all about other, Philippians 2. And then second, second thing, instead they are put on a stand and they give light to everyone in the house. Why do other people need light in the house? They need light so that they're, they don't stumble around, they don't fall, they don't crash. I just want to say, guys, are you the light in the room so that others can see? Right? Let us be light. Let us be intentional. And yes, I know all of our gifts are different. But let us be engaged in talking about what we can do together. What Jesus is saying here about they can see your good deeds, right? They can see that you're not just doing the, the hearing, but you're doing the doing. They see your deeds, and what do they do? They glorify their Father in heaven. We begin to believe that, by, we, we begin to believe that being scared and fearful and not just sharing, not teaching, not passing it on, not testifying to how good Jesus is in our great God is okay because we live in a time and for a great many churches and, and for a great many Christians that sharing has, not sharing has become the norm. Not reproducing is okay because we're looking at each other and we think it's okay because we are influenced in our beliefs and our thinking in three core areas and we've talked about this before, right? What are the three core areas that we're, we're influenced in our beliefs? Number one is our um, experience. Number two is our, our logic. And number three is our, our, our community. And if so, what's okay in our general community often becomes okay in us. It has become okay. It has become okay not to be really that engaged in discipleship. Not engaged. Not engaged in, in reproducing. And I think that the, that the truth is for most of us that we are scared and don't really want to engage discipleship, nor in the calling to make disciples. It's scary. Maybe it makes you fearful. And maybe because of that fear, you think, Jesus would never ask me to do something scary, so I don't really have to. Or maybe you know it might uh, make you look a little different, and you don't want people to think of you as being a little different. I always think of, and I've said this before, I don't want to be that Christian. Because every once in a while, you meet Christians that are like so 100% into it that no matter what conversation you have, it goes up to Christ. And, and some of it's a little weird. They're, you know, like, and you see kind of like little Christians kind of mocking Christians, right? You, I know there's that Christian guy that makes those little videos. And he's like, you, he's talking about those Christians that work scripture into everything that they do, right? So he's in the market and he's like, oh, there's a sale here. It's just like the sale of, you know, the Lord is my sale and he is my strength, right? You know, that kind of thing, right? He's kind of making fun of that. And he's like, oh, there's new shoes. Oh, bless the gospel and the, the feet that bring, you know, like, Every little thing is like, I, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that crazy. Maybe you shouldn't be that crazy either, but you know what I'm saying? that I've always been kind of worried about being that Christian that is just so focused on Jesus that everything is, goes back to Jesus. But then you also look at their lives, right? And they do have an impact that is quite profound for the glory of Jesus Christ. I think we're scared of being looked at a little bit differently. And maybe you're scared, maybe you're scared that you you might not know enough about Jesus and his word. Scared that there might be questions that you can't answer. Maybe you're even scared that you don't know maybe Jesus as well as you should. And so you don't want to feel like a hypocrite. Guys, I, I, want, to, I want to show you this, okay? I want to show you this. Jesus didn't tell perfect people to go make disciples. Jesus didn't tell perfect people to go make disciples. Look what happens with Peter. Uh, Galatians 2, 11 to 13. In Galatians 2, 11 to 13, Paul is talking. Galatians 2, 11 to 13, and he's talking about Cephas. He's talking about Peter. So Cephas is Peter's other name. When Cephas came to Antioch, this is Paul saying, I, Paul, opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. He was walking in sin. For before certain men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles, his brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, right? But he was separating themselves from them because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. He was afraid of what people would say and think. 
The other Jews joined him in this hypocrisy, and others joined him, so that by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. Peter, guys, remember what Peter did on the first day that he had the Holy Spirit in him? He preached and 3,000 people came to know and believe in Jesus Christ. That's what Peter did. When Peter and John went to pray, what did they do? They met a lame man, a blind man, lame man on the way, right? They say that in Acts, in early Acts, that, that the apostles were so full of the Holy Spirit and so gifted with the healing as a proclamation of the power of Jesus Christ that people would line the streets so that his shadow would pass by. Guys, he, he, <laughs> Micah, I would love to answer your question. That almost makes me cry. That's awesome. Um, Micah has a question, so he's putting his hand up. Uh, we'll remember it, okay, and we'll talk after love. Um, he was used by God in incredible ways, incredible ways, right? Yet we still see him falling here and caring about what other people think to the point that he actually becomes hypocritical in the message of the gospel. He wasn't perfect, but he's still engaged in shining and showing Jesus. Paul also states that he recognizes that he's the chief of all sinners and that he was only saved by the grace of Jesus Christ, right? We are not perfect. Jesus didn't say you have to be perfect before you start sharing and shining the gospel. We are all in this together. In this group, we are with Jesus Christ and we are with each other. The Holy Spirit lives in us and unites us to Jesus. The Holy Spirit lives in us and unites us to each other. We are in this together and I pray, I pray that you are encouraged in that. That it is not a discouragement that to know, yeah, you know what? I, I probably should be engaged in this more. But recognizing that we are in this together, I pray that that realization can, can actually allow us to start talking about it with each other. This is why I don't share that with each other. This is what I'm scared of. Share that with each other. I don't know enough about this. Share that with each other. Guys, remember I've talked about learning? What is the first thing that has to happen before we really engage in learning? And that's recognizing that we have a problem. Guys, our problem is that as the church of Jesus Christ, we are not engaged intentionally in discipleship right? And we need to be. And we are called to be witnesses. In closing here, I'm going to read a couple passages of scripture. We are called to be witnesses. Acts 1.18. In Acts 1.18, Jane, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We are believers. We have the Holy Spirit within us. We are his witnesses. We know that we are called to be preachers. Romans 10, 13 to 14 says this, For anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, but how can they be, how can they come, how can they, sorry, call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? The Greek word here for preaching is keruso, meaning to herald or to speak out publicly. Right? To speak out publicly, to publicly be willing to speak out about Jesus. How will people hear unless we are publicly willing to talk about Jesus, to share about Jesus? Uh, Colossians 1, 28 says, He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Jesus Christ. That's our mission as church to become fully mature, but also to present others fully mature in Jesus Christ. He is the one we proclaim, we speak of, admonishing and teaching. We are called to be ambassadors, 2 Corinthians 5, 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. That is still us today. We are ambassadors. And God's desire is that everyone comes to salvation. 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 5 says, I urge you then, first of all, that petition and prayers, intercession and thanksgiving be made to all for all people, for kings and for all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all goodness and holiness. This is good and pleasing to God, our Savior, who 
wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, kind, the man, Jesus Christ. People need to know about Jesus. It is God's heart that all know, and his desire is to share that through us. Guys, we are called to the ministry of sharing Jesus' truth and love with others, and we are called to the ministry of making disciples. If we are engaged in learning and applying, guys, what will happen next is that God will use us to produce others who also want to know and experience what it means to live, what it means to follow, what it means to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. If we are in the right place with Jesus, meaning he is leading and we are following, we are loving and trusting, obeying and worshiping, if we are engaged in that, and then if we are courageous enough to share that with others, people will be drawn to him. It isn't us that they're drawn to anyway, guys. It's Jesus that they're drawn to. It's Jesus that they're drawn to. Yes, we are scared, but we are called to it, to it, and he will not leave us alone. As disciples, we are learners. As disciples, we need to be appliers. And as disciples, with Jesus Christ shining in us, we are called to be reproducers. Therefore, go make disciples is what Jesus says to us as his church. Let's pray. Lord God in heaven, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that even though we're all different and that even though we all have different abilities and you have given us different gifts, even different spiritual gifts through the presence of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that in our own way and by your leading and by learning from you, Lord God, that you would engage us in applying Lord God, that as we apply, that people would see you shining in us and that they would be drawn to you. And Lord God, that we would be intentional about going and sharing the gospel, that we would be intentional about being witnesses, that we would be intentional about being ambassadors, that these truths, Lord, would not leave our mind, and that just because it's, others aren't doing it, that it would still be something we know we can do. Just because others aren't doing it, that it would not be okay for us to not be engaged in it. And God, this isn't just for me as a pastor. This is for all of us. And God, if we realize that there is much we need to learn, then God, I pray that you would give us wisdom and grace and also energy and excitement to learn that which we need to learn, that we might be proclaimers of your gospel, and God, that we might be a part of your mission to save the lost and to mature the saved. God, I pray that we would find rest and peace in the fact that we're all kind of in the same boat and that we can do this together as family in Jesus Christ. God, I pray this for your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray these things, amen.